Good morning, IB Math. We're going to move on to 6. Um, let's see, what are we up to? D. And we're going to talk about sectors and segments of a circle. All right, so first a little bit of definitions. What is a sector? What is a segment? If I have a circle with a, a central angle here, I've got some sort of angle theta. A sector is um, this. That shape right there. So a slice of pizza, that is a sector. If I have a circle and I cut a piece of it off, this part right here is called a segment. So sectors and segments. Now within sectors and segments, we also have arcs. An arc is a, uh, a part of a circle. Now notice a segment is formed by a chord and an arc, part of the circumference. So a segment is formed by a chord and an arc. A sector is formed by two radii and an arc. This is a slice of pizza here. This is, I don't know what shape this is, I'm just cutting it right off there. I could also have a whole other shape that we're not going to deal with is if I have two circles with different radii and I get this kind of moon shape, you know, when, the, the, when it's not a full moon. That's actually called a crescent, and we won't be dealing with those in this class. All right, so we need to be able to find the area of these things. Now, as we look at the area of these things, um, uh, it's important to remember chord and arc, radius, radius, angle, and arc. These are all going to help us to um, see what are going to be the areas of sectors and the areas of segments. All right, so let's take a look at these. So um, the area of a sector of a sector can be found by the angle divided by two pi. This angle divided by two pi, which will give me the, the portion times pi r squared. If I if I simplify this a little bit, I notice the pi's are going to cancel. Um, I'm going to have one over. So the area formula can be simplified to one half of r squared times the angle. And of course here the angle. Oh, I I should have made a big deal about this. The angle has to be in radians. This angle has to be in radians. How about the, uh, the area of a, um, so there's the area of a sector, um, and then, let's see, I, I don't think I want to talk about the area of a segment yet, we'll talk about the area of a segment a little bit later, um, but basically the area of the segment is going to be the area of the sector minus the isosceles triangle here. Can you see that if I, if I added that here? And we'll, we'll look at an example of that a little bit later. Right now, I really want to focus with just with the area um, of a sector of a circle. All right, so let's do a couple of examples here. One very basic, very sim simple example, and then one uh, a lot more difficult. So first, let's find the area of sector... A, O, B. I forgot a T, didn't I? Sector A, O, B. All right. A, O, B. Now, when I look at this, I might ask myself, well, what sector exactly am I talking about? Am I talking about this one? or that one over here. This is the minor sector. This would be the major sector. So I really just want the minor. Unless it's otherwise tell you to find the major one, it's always going to be the minor one. 
Now, in order to do this, I need to have a couple of measurements here. I'm going to tell you that the, the radius of this circle is 8 centimeters, and I need to tell you the angle, and I need to tell you um, uh, uh, the angle I'm going to tell you is going to be um, 135 degrees. All right, so now the area of the sector, we have the formula for the area of the sector. It's going to be, um, uh, remember the area of the sector is going to be one half of r squared times theta. So area equals one half r squared theta. So area equals one half, the radius is eight squared times, uh-oh, the whole problem comes to a screeching halt here. Why? Well, because I have to have theta in radians. And right now it's in degrees. So I need to um, uh, convert 135 degrees. So 135 degrees times uh, pi radians over 180 degrees. So the pi is going to be there, 135 over 180 is going to be uh, 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. So that's what I'm going to put in here. Uh, simplify this. Uh, let's see, 8 squared is 64. Um, divided by 4, 2 times 4 is 8. I'm going to get uh, uh, 8 times 3, uh, 24 pi centimeters squared. While we're here, let's do one other thing. Find the length of um, arc A, B, and we use that, remember that symbol for arc. How long is that? So here's the area, we answered this question. Now, what's the length of arc A, B? Well, the length of the arc AB is going to be what portion of the circle? The whole circle is 2 pi r. So the circumference of the whole circle, 2 pi r, 2 times pi times 8, the whole circle is 16 pi. But I don't want the whole circle. I only want this arc right here, 135 degrees. Oh, same problem. I don't want 135 degrees. I've got angles here as 16 pi. So what I really want is going to be um, r times the angle for circumference. So it's to find the length of the minor arc, it's going to be the radius times the angle, um, 3 pi over 4. Let's see, 4 over 3 is 2, 2 times, uh, two times 3 is 6 pi centimeters. So the whole thing is 16 pi, but just the minor arc is 6 pi long. All right, let's take a look at another example, a much harder one. Uh, we talked about this briefly in a previous lesson, something called a composite figure. And in this composite figure, I'm going to have a cone sitting atop a hemisphere. So I've got a cone sitting atop a hemisphere, a half circle. All right, so let's see, what measurements am I going to give you here? So let's say I'm going to give you that, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to give you the, the angle uh, inside here is going to be 60 degrees, and the slant height is going to be 14 centimeters, giving you the information in the most annoying, frustrating, incomplete, less useful way possible. And well, what do I want to do with this thing? Well, I could find its surface area, I could find its volume, uh, I could do all sorts of things with this. The surface area would be the lateral area of the cone and half of the surface area of the sphere. The, um, 
The volume would be the volume of the cone plus half the volume of the sphere. Um, uh, all sorts of interesting things here. So let's find, let's first find how tall is this thing? How high is this thing? Well, here's H. This would be the radius. Oh, I know, they don't look the same. But just pretend that the, the radius here would be the same as the radius there. So the total height is going to be H plus R. Let's find the total height of this object. Uh, let's say this object is some sort of uh, 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 a floating buoy, and we want to know what is the total height of this object. And then we'll do something like find the total surface area. How much material would it take to, to cover the whole thing? All right. Well, uh, I, notice I've got a little triangle right here to find the H. Um, right off the bat, I don't like that 60 degrees in there. I want to convert that 60 degrees. So let's convert 60 degrees into uh, radians. So 60 degrees times 2 pi over um, 360, or I should have just done pi over 180. Um, either way, if I convert this, I should get, uh, what is that going to be, pi over 3 radians. So instead of 60 degrees, I'm going to have pi over 3 radians. And I want to find this height right there. Well, let's see, I've got an angle. I want opposite, and I've got hypotenuse. What uses an angle opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. This is a sine problem. The sine of any angle is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The sine of pi over 3 equals h over 14. The height of my cone is going to be 14 times the sine of pi over 3. The height is going to be... Now, if we knew our unit circle really well, we should know the sine of pi over 3 um, in, our, in our heads. Um, but if we don't know the unit circle, we probably have to do it on our calculator. Notice I'm using radians here, so I want to make sure that I'm in radian mode. I'm in degree mode right now. So if I go to radian mode, and I do 14 times the sine of pi divided by 3. And... Um, I get 12.12-ish. I would like to have done that. Uh, uh, the sine of pi over 3, the sine of 60 degrees, I w wish I could have done that in the exact form. Um, if I remember my unit circle, I think it's root 3 over 2, um, which would be 7 root 3. Oh, is that right? Let's see. 7 times the square root... Whoops. 7 times the square root of 3. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it is 7 root 3. So anyway, so we know that that is my true height. But that's not the height of the whole cone, because I need the radius too. So I need to find the radius. Well, I'm going to... So I, I, I've, I found the H part. Now I need the R part. Using the same triangle. Uh, pi over 3, 14. Now I want to find the radius. All right, let's see. What do I got? I've got uh, uh, th this angle here is pi over 3, and I've got the hypotenuse, and I want to find the adjacent. What uses an angle, hypotenuse, and adjacent? Cosine. So the cosine of any angle is the ratio of the hypotenuse, uh, no, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine at pi over 3 equals r over 14. 14 times the cosine of pi over 3 equals r. My radius is going to be, let's see, pi over 3, cosine of pi over 3. That's a nice, well-behaved one. Root 3 over 2, 1 half. I think it's going to be 7. So let's see, 14 times the cosine of pi divided by 3. Yep, sure enough, 7. All right, so we have that H is 12.2, R is 7. The total height, we just add them together. So 
7 plus 12.12 is 19.12 centimeters. There's the total height of this uh, composite figure by adding them together. All right. Um, we could, now that we know, everything else after this point would be kind of easy. Now we know the radius and height. Could we find the volume of the cone using the following formula? Yes. Could we find the volume of the hemisphere? Yes. And add them together, half the sphere, add them together. Um, I think everything else after this would be, would be fairly simple. I, I, I don't see any, this was a tough one here. Um, the, if, if, if we look back at the, 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 the question, uh, it's going to come up. We talked about it before. The area of a segment. If I have a circle, and let's say I've got uh, radiuses of 8 centimeters and 8 centimeters, and I want to find the area of the segment. Well, to find the area of the segment, I'm going to find the area of the whole sector minus area of the triangle, the isosceles triangle inside it. The area of the whole sector minus the triangle. Now the area of the sector. Oh, I need an angle here, don't I? Um, well, let's see. If I if I if I gave you some angle here of let's say um, uh, pi over um, six. So now the area of the sector that should be fairly simple. Plug into the area of the sector formula. The area of the triangle might be a little bit more difficult here. How would we do this? Well, uh, the, the, I could use um, uh, one of my other formulas from geometry for finding the area of a triangle given a radius and an angle. I could drop a hypotenuse. That would take a lot longer. I mean, drop a, a vertical here to find this and then find that. Um, is this going to be 8? Not necessarily. Um, is there any right angles in here? None that I know of. So, so here, I think the best way to do it would be to find the area um, of the, the sector would be one half of the angle um, uh, using the formula uh, area of sector one half of radius squared times pi over six and then the area of the triangle uh, I've got an isosceles triangle here um, finding the area of the triangle I could use uh, let's see which which formula could I use there for the area of a um, given two given two sides and an angle. There's a, there's a formula for that uh, with the law of sines. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But we can find the, the area of the triangle and then just subtract them. Look in your formula book for that one. All right. So uh, now I think we're ready to go ahead and do uh, homework uh, 6D which is on page 383, and I want you to do problems 1 through 7. Now for 1, you're going to have to find um, the arc length and the area of the sector for four different circles. For problem 2, uh, draw a circle. Uh, the sector formed by a central angle of pi over 12 has a specific area. Work backwards to find the radius. So a little bit of algebra there, but n not much. Number 3, a sector has a radius of 12 meters and an area of 36 pi meter squared. Find the angle of the sector, uh, the angle in the sector and the perimeter of the sector, which would um, be the two radiuses plus the arc length. Number four is a little find the area of a segment. Number five deals with a, a pendulum swinging back and forth, which creates a sector. If you think about a, a, a pendulum swinging back and forth, the, the length of the pendulum is like the radius. How far does the pendulum go? is the length of the minor arc. Um, 
Uh, number four deals with a quadrant or a quarter of a circle. Uh, so draw a diagram there and break it into fourths and just you know realize that it, when you break a circle into fourths there's going to be the, the angle in each of those sectors will be 90 degrees. So some nice things sh should happen there. With the homework, remember I want you to send it to me via uh, either a JPEG, a single picture if you can, or a PDF file would be better. Um, don't send me a whole ton of emails with one problem on each page. Um, and if you've got any problems you couldn't get, put something in the post section. I'll give people a chance to respond and uh, post answers. If not, um, I'll create some sort of answer and post it there myself. All right, guys, good luck and get to work.